This episode of The Phenomenon is sponsored by Cryptic Case Files. From the creators of Cryptic Podcast, get ready for a new interactive experience where you get to play your own active role in the story. In Cryptic Case Files, you'll help solve the mysterious case of Maggie Tills, a college-aged girl who's turned up missing. You'll search for clues across the internet, scouring different websites, blogs, social media accounts, and podcasts. It's your job to help a local journalist to debunk the wild claims about her disappearance and to help him find the truth about Maggie. Interact with characters via email, phone calls, and texts to try to unravel the mystery and bring the truth to light. Cryptic Case Files will be available in early 2022. Head over to crypticpodcast.com to sign up now, get 10% off, and enter for a chance to be part of Cryptic's beta test group. That's Cryptic Case Files. Available to sign up now at crypticpodcast.com. Finally, the monsters are gone. The shards no longer swarm the skies, killing people at first glance. The indestructible tall ones have disappeared. Their whereabouts, unknown. In their wake remains only a shred of the original human population. Survivors are scattered around the globe, some finding new communities, some only more isolation, all of them haunted by the past, and slowly learning to move forward. The world is forever changed, but humanity and everything that comes with it perseveres. This is the Phenomenon. Survivors. Winchester. Written by Andrew Pomeroy. Directed by Jared J. Smith. All set! Moving! Clear. Why can't we just use the snow plows to clear these fuckers like Jones did on <laughs> Capitol Hill? Longmire wants to reserve the plows for emergencies. And, you know, actual snow. Only three working ones left, so... Yeah, I know, I know. Still, more fun than doing it this way. <laughs> That's for sure. How much further to, what is it, Westminster? Winchester. I uh, should be coming up in the next couple miles. I kind of hope it's deserted. What? But why? I mean, I'd be happy to find survivors, of course, but aren't you tired of people attacking us? I mean, it's, it's not ideal, but you know, I feel a lot better with our squad's best shot covering my ass. Oh, shut up. Hey, now, I'm serious. That's the only reason I'm comfortable not having a second envoy with us. Everyone who rides with you is lucky. Well, not everyone. Shit, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mean it's to. It's fine. Listen, I know it's not easy, but if you want to talk about it, If you don't mind me asking, how did you escape? I do mind. Uh, my bad. My, my bad. <sighs> Those things, the tall ones, were unfucking stoppable. It doesn't matter how good a shot you are when bullets don't do shit. I was the only one to get out. Long time ago now. I'm sorry. You ever come across them? The tall ones? No, thank God, but I lost quite a few people to the shards, so I can certainly understand the helplessness. The hopelessness. The 
dying sounds of my fiance as she turned into a lifeless husk still keeps me up at night. Fuck. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were engaged. In another life. You know, we're all different now. Everything is different now. Sorry to be so closed off. I know I'm not the only one who lost people. Just letting you know you aren't alone. You don't have to cope alone. Thanks. I really do appreciate it. Shit. Barricade ahead. So much for it being deserted. You see anyone? Nope. Wait. Eleven o'clock. Dude exiting the building on the left. I see him. He looks unarmed. Why is he just standing there? Probably waiting for us. Well, all right then. Leave the gun. It's better to come off as non-threatening as possible. There's movement on top of the buildings to our sides. If they wanted to ambush us, we have no cover. Let's be smart about this. Remember, this is a rescue and relief mission. Hello! I'm Corporal Brianna Brown, and this is Private First Class Joseph Hansen. We're from DC and are offering a safe haven to all who need it. We have food, shelter, and power. We've heard the message. You're from Longmire's group. Yes, sir. You guys can drop the military shit. I know you're wanting to show power and a sense of order, but we're in a different time now. Name's Charles. Nice to meet you, Charles. On top of transporting survivors, we're also clearing roadways to allow for easier travel between groups who'd rather stay put. We can offer trade, eventually a new power grid. You alone? We have backup a few miles behind us. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes. I should inform you that we've been following you for the past 20 miles. We know there's no backup. Search the truck. Fuck. I didn't see those guys behind us. Kinda wish I had that gun now. You get that one lie. The next one will not be taken as lightly. You're welcome to all of our supplies. We're instructed to give them out to survivor groups anyways. Alexandra. You can bring our guests to the library. Copy that. Let's go. You have to put these blindfolds over your head on the way. Well, if they aren't wanting us to see the town, I guess that's a good sign they aren't planning on killing us, right? Beautiful, Jacob. You're getting better with every painting. Thank you, Alexandra. After last week, I have more clarity. I can see that. Come in, Charles. Sid. Hey, do you need me to stick around? Thank you, but it's fine. Have this piece hung alongside the others. You got it. Just yell if you need anything. Thank you, Jacob. You can take off your blindfolds. Sorry about that, but I'm sure you understand the hesitancy towards strangers. That we do. Not exactly a warm welcome on your part, though. I think you'd agree that we have a long way to go before pleasantries are the norm. Even though the tall ones and shards are gone, there are still plenty of monsters out there. What do you want with us? You already know we're from the DC settlement. I'm sure you know that we aren't looking to pick any fights, but we do have the firepower to defend ourselves. Ah, yes. We've heard Longmire's transmission. Your group is more than welcome. The more people, the faster we can rebuild. And what exactly are you trying to rebuild? Not rebuild. 
build. A place controlled by the people, not just the rich and powerful. I see. It's not often that humanity gets the chance to start from scratch. We went through a mass extinction together and survived. Don't we owe it to the ones we lost to build a better future? That's certainly a beautiful idea. It's one that we in Winchester are trying to achieve ourselves. A better future. <laughs> Although I have to ask you, what is your plan for the next phenomenon? Uh, what do you mean, next phenomenon? You think they're coming back? Don't play stupid. What's Longmire's plan? What are your intentions for their next arrival? What do you mean? I don't- The project. There was an international research and response group in place before the Shards arrived. We're still in the process of piecing together all the information they knew and how they knew it, so we can be better prepared for next time. Next time? How the hell do you know about this and I don't? You may outrank me, but I've been with the group longer. They're coming back? Not for thousands of years, but yeah, uh, probably. Longmire wants to get as many details as possible confirmed before making it public. <clears throat> we know about the project. About the paintings from the Chicago bunker. About a lot of things. So let me ask you again. What is your plan for their arrival? I mean, to... Beat them. Uh, of course, to survive, to kill them. I isn't that obvious? Hmm. I'd like to show you something. Let's go. Yeah, I wish this place was deserted too. Outsiders? Slit their throats and string shit. them up by their feet? Oh, shit, shit, shit. Do I have your attention? You need to listen very carefully. These three lost souls behind me are far from innocent. Last week they snuck into town trying to steal supplies from us. When one of our residents saw them, they attacked her. Luckily, Charles here was on patrol and was able to stop them before they could do anything to her. That doesn't explain why they're strung up like that. Why you're draining their blood, why there's fucked up murals of tall ones covering the walls. You're right. It doesn't. While it may seem that our goals are aligned as far as building a better society, our end goal differs. What? How? There is no beating them. No winning. We are simply joining them. Joining them? Charles? Towards the end of the phenomenon, I was killed by a tall one, but was brought back by one of the freed. Wh what? How? Who are the freed? There are supposedly the good Tall Ones that didn't take part in the purging of the world. That's right. Longmire and his men apparently had a run-in with them. I, I overheard Jesse talking about one too. While I had my own run-in, and while my complete comprehension is fading as time goes on, what I do know is that we're mere ants compared to these beings and their masters. To them, we are a flawed form. 
Humans and sentient beings in our dimension will never be able to beat them. And if we can't beat them, we must try to appease them. Make offerings. Become one of them. Come again? My husband, Adam, and I. We stayed here in this warehouse for the majority of the phenomenon, along with most of our friends and family. This used to be part of a food canning business, so we would have been able to survive here for years and never have to leave. We were here for months, resisting the temptation to go outside. One night, the ground started shaking. Adam hid me and my sister in a small storage container in the corner behind you. I begged him not to leave me, but it all happened so fast. A group of ten tall ones broke in through the walls, like it was made of paper. Adam and the others lured them to the center of the warehouse, drawing them away from us. I didn't hear any screaming or any destruction. So after a minute, I cracked open the lid of the storage container to see what was happening. The tall ones had surrounded them, but weren't attacking. They started swaying and emitting this sound. It was like atonal ringing, rising and falling in multiple pitches. It was disorienting. And that's when the screaming started. Slowly, I watched as my husband, my family, my friends turned into tall ones, their bones breaking and readjusting, their skin tearing and changing, all of them. One by one, were changed. Reborn. I... I don't know what to say to that. If we are to survive, we must appease them. Offer sacrifices, complete devotion, so that they will make us in their form. You're nothing more than a cult. Sacrificing blood to your gods. The only difference between a cult and a religion is time. And this is much more than just any other religion. No religion has ever revealed their gods to the entire world. The only recorded history of a global event in relation to religion was the Great Flood. Originally, it was the Epic of Gilgamesh, but many religions retold the story as their own version. It's even possible that it was originally an interpretation of the phenomenon before ours, passed through generations by word until finally a deluded version was written down. And you must remember the dreams. What? The globally shared dreams, especially around the end. I think I can remember fragments. When was there ever a recorded incident of mass collective dreams? If any god from any religion gave everybody on earth the same dream, would you not be convinced that there might be some truth in that? It could have been something in the atmosphere. Some chemical reaction left by the shards. We know that homes people think are haunted have been nothing more than people hallucinating because of a gas leak. There's always rational explanations, even if we don't quite understand it yet. You can't kill people and make sacrifices based on a hunch. It's so much more than a hunch. The first time we were attacked by intruders, they came to this warehouse thinking that they found a gold mine of supplies. My sister, Lana, was here helping to fix the holes in the walls. You could hear her screams on the other side of town. Everybody ran here as fast as they could. Jacob was the first to enter and was grazed by a bullet. They only had one gunman and Charles was right behind Jacob and took out their only defense with one shot. We surrounded them and they stood in the same spot where Adam and the others were reborn. They surrendered, knowing there was no way out. Charles and Jacob tied them up as I searched for Lana, only to find her face down. 
lifeless. In a pool of blood. I'll be honest. Before I knew she was dead, I thought about letting them go. Being merciful. Understanding that they were maybe just desperate for food. But they took the last of my family away from me. I walked over to where they knelt and slit their throats one by one. I didn't even think about it. It was like I wasn't even controlling my own movements. I had never killed anyone before, but there I stood, over five dead monsters. Jesus fucking Christ, you were in shock. You were grieving. The thing is, after that, the dreams returned. For all of us that were there, not only the dreams, but an immense collective presence. Something telling us that this was the way. That somehow the spilt blood in this spot was the path towards rebirth. We were surprised at how many times our town was attacked, especially in the beginning. It was like they were sent to us for the purpose of sacrifice. And each time blood is spilt here, the dreams and sense of unity with their dimension gets stronger within us. But you were surprised by the three behind you last week. Yes. Before them, it had been several months since our last attack. So we unfortunately became complacent. So what, during your dry spells of no attacks, do you just hunt for your sacrifices? Goats, sheep, volunteers? We did try animal sacrifice between attacks, but it must be human blood. Charles, would you mind rolling up your sleeves? Oh, Jesus! We all take turns offering up our own blood. And the paintings, just for fun? To complete the aesthetic of your open concept murder shrine? The paint is mixed with blood. Hence the dark tint to all of them. Of course it is. Yeah, this is insane. And you? What do you say? I... I don't know what to think. Are you fucking serious? The uneasy sensation that I remember feeling during those dreams, I still feel it sometimes. I don't know how to explain it, but listening to you recounting everything, that feeling, it's like I'm finally remembering. But instead of unease, it's almost... Peaceful? Yeah. Did you fucking drug her or something? Almost like a presence, right? Like nothing has felt more right in your entire life. Yes, it takes some time getting used to, but this is the truth. The only way for our species and descendants to survive. Brianna, Longmire will never go for this, and you shouldn't either. For all the shit we've seen, he wouldn't offer fucking blood to appease the very beings that murdered our entire planet. We should be focusing on how to beat them, not worship them. I knew he wouldn't believe. I know you don't agree with us. But I assure you, we aren't the monsters you need to worry about. You, though. Do I need to worry about you? No. We were on a peaceful mission here, remember? We'll leave you in peace. And there's no reason to mention any of this to Longmire, and unless you want us to. There's, there's no need to kill us. Please. Just, just let us go. Well, that's good to hear. Jacob will escort you to your truck. Oh. Oh. Th thank you. Here. We still have to blindfold you, as I'm sure you understand why. Uh, of course, of course. Uh, 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 Brianna. Brianna. 
Huh? Oh. Yeah. Let's go. I... I think I'm gonna stay. What? What do you mean you're gonna stay? I don't know. Just... Nothing has ever felt so... right to me. So true. Even before the phenomenon, I never felt truth or peace like I feel it now. Brianna? You're not yourself. We have been here for like 15 minutes, and this is kind of a big life change, you know, joining a co religion after a traumatic conversation. I am myself, and this isn't the first time I'm feeling this. It's just the first time I'm able to finally... able to put all of the pieces of the puzzle together. I promise I'll be okay, all right? All right. All right. I'm not gonna force you. Goodbye, Brianna. Tell Longmire that I decided to stay and help out here. That I'll eventually explain everything to him in person. Goodbye, Joseph. <sighs> okay. Just me then, I guess. Let's go. Charles, can you make sure the supplies in their truck weren't disturbed? Other people need it more than we do. Understood. I'm really happy you're staying, Brianna. Please don't hurt him. He's just upset. For obvious reasons. Of course. We aren't aggressors. We only act in self-defense. Every offering is of a monster, or of our own blood. We don't know when the next phenomenon will come. Some texts we've come across say it could be 40,000 years. But we need to be ready and devout. So, what now? Are you hungry? Surprisingly, yes. Great. I'll show you our aquaponic gardens that are almost completely self-sufficient. All right, here we are. You can take that off now. So you really believe everything she said in there? Of course. Look, I know from your perspective, it probably sounds crazy, but Joseph, a few years ago, a supernatural entity flooded the sky and drained the blood out of you just by looking at them. I think the bar for crazy is set pretty high here. There's things we still don't understand, and may never understand in our current form, but by far, I have never been so sure of something in my entire life. It's not a coincidence that we all feel the same way. Yeah, well, I should probably get headed out before dark. Understood. Yeah? Just think about what Alexandra said. Maybe deep down you felt it too and you just aren't ready. That's all I ask. Think about it. Sure. It will do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
shit. 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 Why the fuck did you do that, Brianna? You fucking serious? This is Private First Class Joseph Hansen. I am in distress. The settlement group in Winchester has taken Corporal Brianna Brown. They are armed and extremely dangerous. I, I need backup. If we attack tonight, we'll have a better chance at surprising them and a better chance at retrieving the Corporal safely. Over. This is Private First Class Joseph Hansen. Respond. Over. Hello? Can anyone hear this? What is wrong with this thing? What? No. What the fuck? It's fucking... Of course. <laughs> fuck. Remember, we let you go in peace.